Hi there, and welcome to this short tutorial. My name is Valentine, and I want you to show you how easy and fast it is to kickstart a very simple microservice using Spring Boot and Gradle. We'll create a simple REST endpoint, and after everything works locally, we're gonna deploy it to the Google App Engine. Additionally, we'll try to get everything up and running in only 10 minutes. But let's first have a look at what you need in order to get started. So what I expect from you is that you already have some Java experience so that this isn't like your first Java project, but you have done other projects beforehand and you already have an IDE like IntelliJ, which is quite popular for Java projects and if possible some greater experience but if you haven't used gradle in the past that's not a problem i will show you the basic set the basic settings that you need in order to complete this project so this is all all the stuff that you should have already installed in your computer another thing is that you need a google cloud account and most important that the account should have billing enabled because without billing enable, we will not be able to deploy this configuration. And additionally, what you need to have installed locally is the cloud SDK, which allows you to communicate with the Google Cloud. And that should be installed as well and connected with your own Google Cloud account. Uh, as a tip, make sure you check the video description because you will find there all the links needed in order to install any tools or anything that you might be missing and after you get everything set up you may continue with this tutorial so you think you have everything you need let's get started okay so the first stop in order to create our project would be the spring initializer and we are gonna select a gradle project and we are gonna use groovy for this one and the spring boot version is absolutely okay Let's call this artifact cars. Let's assume that we're building an application that manages cars or something like that. And as a dependency, we're gonna select um, web. And that's about it in the first place. So I'm gonna generate the project. And as you can see, I will be given a zip file, which I will put in my IntelliJ projects and unpack it there. Okay, so I unzipped the archive and I got another additional layer which I don't need. And as you can see, uh, inside we'll have a built Gradle file and the Gradle wrapper as well. And the first step after we delete this zip file would be to go to IntelliJ and to create a new project, actually to import this project. As you can see, IntelliJ recognizes that I have a new project here and I will import project from external model and make sure that Gradle is selected. And what I will do here additionally is that I'm gonna check this auto import. I'm gonna use the default Gradle wrapper, which is default as well. And I'm gonna hit the finish button. And what IntelliJ will do for me is it will look at the Gradle dependency file and it will download any dependencies that are defined there. Meanwhile, and while this is happening, we can open the entire project here. So what I'm gonna do in source Groovy, I'm gonna create a new package here. Let's call this controller. And I'm gonna put any controllers that I will create here. And let's create a Groovy class and call it cars. And nothing spectacular yet. So we'll actually annotate with this with rest controller. Next, let's create a method called show. And this will create a new car. And let's define the class car as well. With the property name. So I'm gonna say new 
name which will be BMW. So this is what it will return. And to make this REST compatible, we have to use request mapping here. This will map to the starting of the application. So let's give it a try. On the right side, we'll find here a Gradle window. And inside the Gradle window are different tasks. And in order to start up the application, we'll use boot run. And the output will be visible in the window below. Okay, so the good news is that the application compiled successfully and the information that I'm looking for is right here. Tomcat started on port 8080. If you're not seeing this detailed output, you probably need to click this button once and you can switch to this more detailed view. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open Postman, but you can do it in the browser as well. And the address that I'm using is localhost port 8080. And as you can see, I have here the starting point of the application where I defined the rest endpoint, and I'm getting back basically the card that I requested. The application itself doesn't do a lot, but it's just to prove that you have a rest endpoint uh, that does some functionality and it's quite easy to get started with it, basically just using two annotations. Now moving forward, since the application is working locally, I would be pretty much interested to see it uh, deployed on the Google Cloud as well. So to do that, I'm gonna go to the Google Cloud platform and I'm in the process of creating a new project. Let's call this my cars project. And I'm gonna click create. And of course this will take a while until it's being created, but soon I will be able to select it in the project list. I'll give it a minute, but Soon, soon, if you select a project up here, you will get this, let's call it small wizard. And we're gonna select here Java, because this is a Java application. We have to select the region where we would like to have it. For me, I'm gonna just go with the default here. And um, the first step, this is all uh, Google Cloud needs to know regarding this application. So while this is completing here, the next step that uh, we will do is uh, we will install a Gradle plugin. And this is the Google App Engine Gradle plugin and the instructions on how to use it are quite clear. Basically, all we have to do is apply a plugin and add this dependency. And I'm just gonna copy that, go to IntelliJ open the build gradle file and make sure you add it under the build script as a dependency and not somewhere else. And the plugin can simply be applied here. So Google Cloud is getting configured. Uh, gradle is downloading locally new dependencies and what we need to do additionally is to tell Google which is our current project. And first you need to know the ID of our current project. And now I open the terminal and you should check if Google Cloud is properly installed or you need to go to the specific location if you don't, uh, if you haven't added to the path environment variable yet. Okay, so for me it's working. I'm gonna paste the project name and this is a property that got updated. So Google Cloud knows, now knows when I'm trying to deploy something that I'm referring to the My Cars project. Now, meanwhile, locally, everything is still running. Uh, I don't need the local application anymore, so I can just stop it at this point. And I should have additional tasks here, which I don't see. Let's, let me click uh, the refresh button as well. And now I should see this additional group of tasks, uh, App Engine Flexible Environment. Now that I see these new tasks, I will create an additional configuration. And 
and this will be a folder called app engine and this will have an app.yaml file and I'm gonna get YAML the I will get the contents of this file directly from this address which we'll find in the video description and I'm gonna post um, its contents here. As you can see, there's not so much to configure. We are just saying that our runtime is Java and that the environment is Flex. Uh, just short notice, there are two types of environments on Google Cloud App Engine. One of them is the standard one and the other one is the Flex. We're doing the deployment for Flex. Uh, in, we're doing the deployment for Flex in this tutorial. But uh, if you don't quite understand the difference between them, uh, Google has some very good docs and you should check them out. Now, I have this configuration file and if I look inside here, I will find a task called App Engine Deploy. And let me run this task. So being a first deployment, this will actually take a bit to complete, but it, if it doesn't fail, like very very fast and it takes a while just let it work it's uh, it's a good sign okay so if you're seeing the same thing that I see um, you're actually pretty lucky I'm gonna copy this address to see if everything is working and put it in postman let's give it a try and yes indeed it's coming the BMW out. And yeah, congratulations. You managed to create and kickstart a small project and in a matter of minutes, you deployed it to the cloud. Thanks for watching this tutorial and I hope you have learned something new. Please give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment with any feedback that you might have. Additionally, if there's anything else you would like to learn, just drop me a message so that I can create other tutorials as well. Please make sure you check the description as well because I'll be posting there other useful information. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next tutorial.